Okay, I'd like to take a moment to show you one of my favorite labs in the Ethical Hacker course. This one is 1026, Perform a DHCP Spoofing Man-in-the-Middle Attack. And in this lab, we're going to create a man-in-the-middle attack. I'll go ahead and hit Start Lab and give you a chance to see how these labs can help your students and benefit their learning. All right, this lab opens up on the IT laptop in our typical environment that we use for our labs. And in this environment, we're going to go ahead and launch EdderCap. And in EdderCap, we'll tell it to use the local interface, not the wireless interface. And click OK. We'll expand this down a little bit. And then we're going to go to Man in the Middle and tell it to start a DHCP spoofing attack. We get the chance to provide some information here. We're going to give it the local subnet of 255.255.255.0. .255 and we're going to go ahead and give it the local DNS server also 192.168.0.11 is the DNS server in our labs. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And now the DHCP spoofing attack has begun. Now, to be able to see the effects of the DHCP spoofing attack, we have the students actually examine this in Wireshark. And so to do that, we're going to go to the map and switch to the support computer. And we're going to look at the effects of this attack in Wireshark. So we'll go ahead and start Wireshark. And we'll select the local interface to do our capture on. And we will go ahead and do a capture. And it starts a capture, but we only want to look at DHCP traffic. So we're going to go ahead and put a boot P filter in here. And you'll see that there's not anything there yet. And so to have the student be able to simulate some DHCP traffic, we'll go ahead and open a terminal window. And we'll have them bring the interface down. IP, link, set. And then the interface is ENP2S0. We'll go ahead and bring that interface down, and then we'll bring that interface back up. When we bring that interface back up, you'll see in the Wireshark interface that there are five packets that it captured. Interestingly enough, a typical DHCP interchange includes four packets. So we've got the discover packet that you can see here, the offer packet, the request packet, and then there's two ACK packets. The ACK packets are are, they both kind of look the same here. They came from the DHCP server, or at least they appear to come from the DHCP server, going to the client on this machine. Now, if we look at these ACK packets and we drill down into them a little bit, look inside of the packet, open up the bootstrap protocol, come down here and you'll see the information that's being provided in that packet. So the different settings that DHCP pack, the DHCP server provides to the client are provided in this ACK packet. So if you look at this option three, the router, you'll notice that the router being provided is not the actual router. So this says the router's 46, or your typical gateway, and this one says that your router is 192.168.0.5. Now this is the correct one, but notice that the ACK packet with the wrong information for the gateway is being provided to the client first. So the client gets the wrong DHCP information by getting the wrong ACK packet first. So if we take a look at what's here on this machine, we'll do a IP route and you'll see, oh, not IP route, it's just route. So if you do a route command, you'll see that the default gateway has been changed to 192.168.0.46 and this machine thinks that that's where all the traffic that doesn't go to this local subnet should go. So interestingly enough, this first ACK packet is the bogus one from the, the DHCP spoofing that provides the wrong gateway. It gives that machine the opportunity to have all of the traffic go through that gateway and for it to be able to examine that packet also. So you'll notice it's kind of interesting that instead of the four packets that you get, you get the bogus ACK packet, and then you get the regular ACK packet right after that. But guess who won? It was the bogus ACK packet. So that gives you a little bit of a feel for what it looks like in Wireshark. Let's go look at this on the Windows side, and we'll, we'll take a look at some of this also. So let's go to the Office One machine. And on the Office One machine, we'll open up a PowerShell window. You could do this in a DOS window also. This gives the student the ability to see the effects here also. 
So I'm going to do a trace route to one of our web servers, trace RT, and we have a, a, a pretend web server out there called rmksupplies.com. And if you do a trace route to that, you'll notice that right now it starts by going through the regular gateway and then on its way out to the RMK Supplies website. So I'm going to do a release and a renew now. So IP config release. Oh, did I spell it wrong? Slash release. There we go. IP config slash release. So we've released our IP address and we'll renew our IP address. And now the interesting thing, once we've renewed our IP address, you'll notice here that once again, the, the gateway is now 192.168.0.46. That's the bogus gateway that's going to direct all the traffic through the attacking machine. All right, so now that we've done that, let's do another trace route again. So we'll do a trace route to our RMK supplies. And you'll also notice that there's an extra hop now. This machine thinks that dot .46, the attacking machine, is the gateway. And then it, once it goes through 46, it passes the information to the right gateway and on out to the internet to RMK supplies. So you can see through traceroute, you can see through the IP config, the changes that the spoofing of DHCP has caused. And you can see how the traffic gets routed through the attacking machine so that it has access to analyze all of your stuff. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and log into RMK supplies. And there's our RMK Supplies website. We'll scroll down and we'll log in into the employee portal. And the employee portal, in this case, once again, we'll log in as B Jackson. And the password is super secret one. See if I did that right. All right, we're logged in as Blake Jackson. Now, the really cool thing about this is we can go back to our machine that's doing the attack, which in this case is our IT laptop, and we can see the information about the bogus packets that it sent, the bogus ACK packets. It, you can see the discover packets and the requests, and you can also see the information about the username and the password on this unsecure website that we logged into because the traffic went through this machine. Now there's one more feature of these labs that is new that I think your students will like also is that we have the ability inside of the labs now to answer questions or ask the student questions that they can answer about the lab. So in this case, we'll have them answer a couple of questions about this lab. Okay, so how many DHCP packets were captured in Wireshark? If you remember, a regular DHCP interchange would have four packets, but because we're DHCP spoofing, there's an extra ACK packet, so there's five packets. And which gateway addresses were provided in the ACK packet? Well, one of them was the real gateway, which was 192.168.0.5, and the other one was the bogus gateway, which was the attacking machine, and that was .46. At this point, we've answered the questions, we've done all the things that the lab required of us, we can click on Score Lab and we'll get the information about how we did on the questions and how we did on the tasks that we were asked to do. We're graded on the fact that we actually started the DHCP man in the middle of attack and, uh, and then we, we have information about what the student did on each of the pieces that they did and they get the information and the specific explanation as to how to go through and make this happen. So this is probably one of my favorite labs. It shows you the concepts of a DHCP man-in-the-middle spoofing attack, but also the effects of it on the machines that are being attacked.